The African Academy of Languages, ACALAN, a specialized institution of the African Union, mandated to develop and promote African languages as a factor for African integration and development, organized an operational and planning workshop for the establishment of the Arabic, Amharic and Tamazic Vehicular Cross-Border Language Commissions from 29th to 31st October 2019 in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia. The objectives of the workshop were to establish the Arabic, Amharic and Tamazic Vehicular Cross-Border Language Commissions, agree on the modalities of operation of the Arabic, Amharic and Tamazic Commissions and national language structures, identify the priority areas of the commissions, produce action plans that take into account the priority areas identified, clarify the role of other stakeholders, including regional economic communities, regional institutions of language and culture, RILC, universities, civil society organizations and ACALA national structures, discuss any other issues relating to the functioning of the language commissions. The workshop brought together potential members to establish the Arabic, Amharic and Tamazic commissions. The members of Akalan's Assembly of Academicians of the Regions, representatives of the regional economic communities, representatives of Akalan's national language structures, focal points of the countries represented in the language commissions, a representative of the Department of Social Affairs of the African Union Commission, representatives of UNESCO and the International Organization of the Francophonie, as well as university departments, members of Akalan Secretariat, representatives of the host country. The opening session was chaired by Professor Ayo Bangbushi, founding president of the Assembly of Academicians of Akalan. Professor Bangbushi qualified the operational workshop as historic in the sense that two of the commissions being established were part of the first batch of 12 vehicular cross-border languages identified by Akalan. I want to just make a few remarks. The role of the language commissions in the work of Akalan has been very, very important. Because it is through these language commissions that a lot of the work that Akalan is doing is realized. It is an irony that of the 12 languages that we agreed to, to be vehicular language border commissions in 2008, the meeting we held here in Addis Ababa, February 2008, um, only two have not had language commissions inaugurated for them. And the two are the ones being inaugurated today. We are now completing what we should have done for all the 12 uh, vehicular cross-border languages that we recognized in 2008. The Executive Secretary of Akalan, Dr. Lang Fafa Damfa, reiterated the importance of Addis Ababa meeting and recalled that it was imperative to create the conditions allowing the commissions to realize the expected objectives. Our mission here is that to encourage the formulation of language policies and the sharing of experiences in policy making and implementation in the member states of the African Union as a means of using African languages in a wider range of domains. Our mission is to identify vehicular cross-border languages and establish commissions for these languages on the basis that African languages will serve to forge the linguistic and cultural unity of Africa to maximize resources and minimize cost. If uh, the, the role of vehicular cross-border languages in African integration is important because they are, they are languages that are spoken across borders. So if you speak one language that is spoken here, you can communicate, you can walk, you can do many things in another country where the same language is spoken. So there are factors of integration, there are factors of solidarity, commerce, etc. Mrs. Sise Maria Mohammed, Director of the Department of Social Affairs, representing Her Excellency Amiral El Fadil, 
Commissioner for Social Affairs of the African Union Commission, stressed the importance of the promotion and enhancement of African languages as an important factor of the continent's political and socio-economic development. It's given me great pleasure to be part of this workshop as the Director for Social Affairs of the African Union Commission. This morning marks a milestone in the quest for the recognition of the African languages as languages of development and peace in Africa. She thanked Akalan and all participants and encouraged them to continue to work together to help Akalan fulfill its noble mandate. She then declared the workshop open on behalf of Her Excellency Amira El Fadil, Commissioner for Social Affairs of the African Union Commission. The session after the opening commenced with the Executive Secretary Dr. Damford's presentation of Akalan and its projects and activities. He emphasized research in African languages and Akalan's work on cultural and linguistic diversity. Dr. Damfer deplored the lack of political will on the part of some African Union member states to promote African languages as a factor in the integration and development of the continent. Professor Ayobangushe then presented the terms of reference that were required of the language commissions and their tasks, which he categorized into three. Initial fact-finding, research and advocacy. He urged members of the three language commissions to be dedicated to the development and promotion of their respective languages in particular and African languages in general. The members of the three commissions made presentations on the state of their languages in their respective countries. The presentations on the modern Arabic language in the six countries that took part in the workshop, namely Morocco, Tunisia, Egypt, Libya, Algeria, Sudan and Mauritania all have common denominators as well as some differences due to the concerns and priorities of each member state. The first remark was that Arabic is the only official language but it is a co-official language in countries like Morocco and Algeria with other languages in these countries. Secondly, there is a political will in all these member states to promote, popularize and revitalize Arabic through its use in the field of new technologies and scientific research. Thirdly, each of these countries revised their constitution in favor of the Arabic language on different dates according to the evolution of the linguistic situation. Finally, the common point in all these member states is that classical Arabic is not used in everyday life by the populace but only in literary, legal, and official texts. The two presentations on the Tamazic language in Morocco and Algeria show the geographical importance of the language, which makes it an essential language in the sub-region. They also show the commendable progress made in recent years as far as the Tamazic language is concerned, starting with its officialization in both countries and its introduction into the education system from primary to higher education. However, the presentation showed that there was still much to be done for this language and the presenters made a solemn appeal for Akalan's support. The Amharic language is presented as the official language of Ethiopia alongside 86 languages and English and Arabic. They are taught in schools and nine of these languages are used in the country's various universities. The introduction of many languages into the education system requires a lot of work. Members of the Modern Arabic Language Commission were drawn from seven countries that took part in the workshop, Mauritania, Morocco, Algeria, Tunisia, Libya, Egypt, and Sudan. Places were reserved for Algeria and other member states in which Arabic is a national language and were not present. Priority projects of the Modern Arabic Commission develop the alphabet and Arabic script to enable it to continue to play the historical role that it has played in the writing of African languages in Arabic character, develop teaching programs from Arabic to non-native speakers, conduct studies on the status of the Arabic language in other African societies as a dominant or minority language, promote the Arabic language to enable it to follow technological developments, Establish festivals and prizes for artistic and film productions in Arabic. Develop partnerships with institutions working to promote the Arabic language. Mobilize human and material resources. Members of the Tamazic Commission unanimously elected Professor Yusuf Nasib as coordinator representing Algeria and Dr. Abdus Salam, secretary representing Morocco.
Priority areas of the Tamazic Commission are geolinguistics, production of a linguistic atlas, carrying out a Tamazic toponymic inventory in North Africa, including Canary Islands and the Sahilo-Saharan region, initiate scientific field trips to carry out corpus collection work, linguistic planning and standardization, standardization of spelling, unification of terminology creation, development of a Tamazic learning program as a language of instruction to provide every African citizen with the opportunity to access any Tamazic training program, learning, teaching, research, documentation in African countries with competent structures, ensuring mobility by granting regulatory authorization under ACALAN to allow students, teachers and researchers to access universities in another country in the Tamazic speaking region training of trainers, journalists, teachers, translators, civil status, court clerks, and so on. Encourage any initiative leading to the organization of scientific and cultural events in countries with Tamazic-speaking minorities with the assistance and support of the Tamazic Commission of Akalan. Make a bibliographic, filmographic, and photo library inventory by encouraging the duplication of archives throughout the Tamazic-speaking world contributes to the collective inscription of major features of the Tamazic cultural and intangible heritage with UNESCO. In financing the Tamazic Commission's work plan, it is important to do fundraising through Akalan with the support of development partners. Also, the members of the Tamazic Commission must work with national structures, focal institutions to seek funding in the context of corporate social responsibility with the support and authorization of Akalan. Project proposals can be targeted to national and continental financial institutions such as the Algerian Foreign Bank, Isalama Bank, African Development Bank, partners, government agencies and other private groups working in the same thematic areas, telephone companies and travel and transport companies. Drs. Getahun Amari and Mulugeta Seyum were elected as coordinator and secretary of the Amharic Commission respectively. Priority areas of the Amharic Commission embark on dictionary creation, conduct dialectical study, harmonization of the writing systems of Amharic, organize conferences and workshops, do polarization of the varieties of the Amharic language, documentation of all works on Amharic, apply technologies to the Amharic language, teaching Amharic in a simple way, adaptation of Amharic to the new generations, conduct evaluations, Promotion of the use of Amharic, embarking on the translation project, creation of cartoons for children in Amharic, establishment of prizes for excellence for the development of Amharic, collaboration with different stakeholders, networking and standardization of Amharic, development of reference material in Amharic for native and non-native speakers, situational assessment and functional areas. Her Excellency Amira El Fadil, Commissioner for Social Affairs of the African Union Commission, who declared the operational and planning workshop closed, urged the members of the commissions to work together harmoniously with other experts to facilitate the smooth implementation of the plans of action as set out during the meeting. Language is an indispensable instrument in the social, political and economic transformation of any people and should be given the consideration it deserves in the discourse and the strategies overall development. Therefore, when Africa embraced modern Pan-Africanism and subsequently attained its independence in the late 1950s and early 1960s, the leaders clearly understood the indispensable role of the African languages in Africa's integration. Excellencies, let me quickly say that it gives me a great pleasure to be part of this workshop as the Commissioner for Social Affairs of the African Union Commission. It also marks a milestone for us all, since this is my first meeting with experts working on the development of African languages from the North Africa region. I have been to other workshops, of course, but for North Africa region is the first one. And in the progress towards the attainment of the objectives of the 2063 Agenda for the Africa we want. 
I am convinced that since the beginning of the workshop, a lot has been done in order to achieve the aim of setting up the commission or the commissions and to also plan for their activities for the next three years. I wish to sincerely thank the former president of the Assembly of Academicians of the African Academy of Languages, Akalan, and other members of the Assembly of the Academicians who are present here. Let me also acknowledge the presence of the experts and linguists from various countries' representatives that have been effectively supporting Akalan in its efforts to develop and promote African languages. So I thank all of you here. And even those who are not with us today, I really thank their efforts. She also expressed her hope that workable and sustainable projects would be carried out by the commissions across the countries in order to further strengthen the solidarity that exists within the sub-region so that concrete achievements could be recorded within their first three years of existence as concrete contributions to the development of Africa and as being set out in Agenda 2063. She assured the participants that the Department of Social Affairs will assist Akalan and its working structures and organs to implement the mandates assigned to them by the African Union. Africa, 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 yeah. Mama Africa.